So re-breaks are your best friends and false breaks are your friends because, well, at least that shows potential prospective interest in the move. So here's what I mean. Um, for Phil, Bill, Joyce, Grant, Jeff, Barbara, Sam, and all of us here, hey, let me ask us, um, where are we most likely to find key iceberg levels, especially for a cheap stock like this? Oh, uh, really quickly, Kathleen, I just see you right now in the main chat. I wrote back to you just on the side, Kath, um, just in regards to your question about the lowest cost uh, on TradeStation. So if you want to private chat me back there, I was a bit confused on it, but I'll definitely follow up with you just on the side with that. Yeah, whole numbers, 50 cent levels, whole numbers. So at least at this point, this popped right away. So, I mean, I'm not jumping into this stock immediately. I mean, this could be a pump and dump. It could be a pop and drop move. So... Actually, this stock has been a known pop and drop stock historically. HOTH has ran for us in the past, but look at this year, just back from last year. Come on now. So you don't want to be on the wrong side of that trade. But here's what I mean when it comes to false breaks. It broke above it here, and it was already moving up at the time. I would not jumped in just yet. So I'm waiting for this to become support. It breaks under this as support, and it drops off a little bit. So it's a bit frustrating because I was just about to get in and it just cleanly breaks under without it breaking back over. Okay, well, I'm just still waiting for it. The whole reason why I look for the rebreak, though, is because the fact that it broke above the level once here already shows the prospective interest. I mean, the fact it broke above three, a key resistance here, we saw a bunch of buying. So the question you want to ask is, what happens if you happen to see more buying from the same level? What happens if this re-breaks this level? What happens if history could repeat itself? So that's truly what I strive for on like legitimately any trade I take. You know, just, I mean, of course, if I, I miss a breakout, then I'll look for support. So, you know, at, at this point, this trade's cooked because I think it's just too sideways now. But hey, you know, if this made a better pullback here to three, I'd be more interested in seeing if support could build off three at first. You know, if it breaks a lower a uh, couple bars afterwards, then you get stopped out. But at least here, I'm looking for support initially. It broke under it. Okay. Well, I'm still looking for the move up. It just has to re-break above this level. So the reason why this was such a good trade is not just A, it's cheap, or B, it moved up. I mean, hey, we see cheap stocks that move up all the time. It's the liquidity. It's the fact that this thing was on a really good spread in pre-market. This, you know, is even more filled in now. You know, this is live market right now here on the right side of my panel, on the right side of my screen. But even in pre-market there, it was doing a good job. It had some pretty good volume on the book. And if I show you book map here, if I show you level four, I even took the heat map off right now because I want to show you the red and green squiggly lines here. The difference between the red and the green lines where you see the gaps, they're tiny, but if you see like little tiny gaps between the red and the green, guess what? That's the spread. So, you know, if you see very tight between the red and the green, you just instinctively know it's on a very tight spread there. Uh, compare that to GitLab, which we're going to get into next. Very nice to see this push now up towards my 4650. But this has a wider difference between the red and the green. This is on a much bigger spread. This is on like an eight cent spread right now or six cent spread roughly. Now it's getting a bit bigger actually here live. So with pre-market, again, it's just the fact that this was not just cheaper moving up. It had great liquidity to it. So that makes it much easier for us to try and take this trade, right? So for my student, James, at least asking, okay, you know, how do you trade pre-market? Are there any tips that you can give? Um, well, it's a good segue for me to mention the pre-market coaching program. We just launched off of Memorial Day weekend. First group coaching session for that will be in July. I did say at the end of June, we'd have the first one. Little did I look at my calendar and realize I forgot I was flying back to New York that week. So taking off a couple of days at the end of June, spending time with my nieces and um, we'll be back and I'll be back in July and uh, we'll get things started for the pre-market coaching program, the one-on-ones, then the groupers involved too. But it's all about re-breaks. It's all, it's all about a re-break over a big level. Same thing happened at 350. Same exact thing happened at 350. It was actually pretty, I don't want to say easy off 350, but for as much as it's moving up and up and up and up and up and up and up, 
All right, well, the first test of that resistance, perhaps you expect for it to hold. Now, if it ends up breaking it here and you try and jump in, okay, you take a small loss or you take a break even trade. You need to make sure that you're getting out very quickly if it fails to pop off that level again. Why? Because, well, look at the reaction the next time. Once it broke back above 350 here, it did a number. And when a stock breaks above resistance and it pops off it, perhaps resistance could become on this bar here, drops down to a low of 349, which means that it actually nipped under this and then right back over. Technically on that red candle there, it nipped under and over, which is exactly what you'd want to look for in order to see a potential bounce. So it broke it here, which led to continuation right away. Really clean entry that you could have taken. I got out on this way before the rebreak here even. So I left some money on the table for my entry off of three. I ended up getting out at 345, a little over 350. And then the last third, it was like just kind of hanging around here, like 345-ish or so. So mostly at 345. But that though, hey, if you're looking for more, it broke above it here and here. So if it's not tanking if it's failing to you know go the other way and it's really failing to drop more and more importantly if the stock affords you the chance to re-break through that level again you want to try and jump in on the re -break. become a cyber group member today just click the link below and receive all these amazing products and a world of knowledge for just nine dollars do it today